Hi, Dr. Romano. What are you up to over there? Hi, how are you? Come along. I want to show you a really good problem I made for the doctor. Oh, for the dad? I'm studying for my dad, Dr. Romano. If you take a look, I did what's called a sequence. I'm going to start off with cyclohexanone, and I'm going to hit it with bromine and acid to get product A. Once I get A, I'm going to treat it with a very strong, sterically hindered base, such as potassium T-butoxide. Could have also used DBU or LDA. Once you get B, I'm going to then treat it with the anion of a malonic ester. Just think of this as a nucleophile, and that's going to give me C. Okay. And then I'm going to hit it with acid and heat to give the final product. So if I were you, maybe you should stop the clip and try to see if you can get these answers. Okay. Okay, Dr. Romano. Okay. Let's begin at the answers. Okay. Hopefully done. you've done it. In the very first step, I've added the bromine to the alpha position. I removed the alpha hydrogen, which is one next to the carbonyl, and replaced it with a bromine. So I did an alpha bromination. Next, the base removes the H and the Br to do an E2, and that gives me my conjugated ketone. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky, and if you go to the Dat Destroyer book, I'll give you the details on when to do what we call a conjugate addition and when to do a carbonyl addition. But what you're going to do is most of the time, unless you have a Grignard or an alkyl um, lithium reagent or one of the really strong reducing agents, where we attack the carbonyl carbon. But ordinarily for regular nucleophiles, such as nitrogen or other nucleophiles, sulfur, etc., we attack the beta position and do a reaction known as a Michael reaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack and I am going to land the nucleophile in the beta position. And as you can see, and then I'll show you the mechanism at the very end of where I put the H on. So once I've added to the beta position, I've added on my nucleophile. Now, this conjugate addition, which I've just done, is called a Michael reaction. I simply add it to the beta carbon. Now, once we're at C, we're going to hit it with acid. Acid is going to break the ester linkage on both sides, here and here, and give you the dicarboxylic acid. Now, whenever you have a dicarboxy acid, um, if you read it backwards, it says, who, who. Remember, who, who means no, no. So that's very unstable. So what you're going to do... That's very clever. So what you're going to do is you're going to lose one of the CO2 groups. And that's going to be lost because two... COOH groups on the same carbon is unstable. And when this is lost, you just simply connect this H to here, and there's your final answer. Now, if you wanted to see how I exactly would do something like this, if you just take a quick look at an example of a Michael reaction, what I did in, a, in a, and this is a, just a generic Michael reaction, I show you how I attack the carbonyl or I attack the beta carbon, and this moves out, and that would give me this, and then all I would do is just pick up an H from the solvent, such as water, to get this. And that's exactly what I did to get C. All right, I hope this helps on a very important reaction okay, on how Dr. to do sequence. Okay, scooch over a bit. I have to try to get this last. Okay. I want to get all of this here good. Okay, good day to you. Wait a minute. Bye-bye, Dr. Romano. Good day to you, sir.